Have you found him to be good? I know you have. Would you welcome Dale Everett? Let's give him a good welcome. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Praise God. What a great worship team you've got here. They do such a marvelous job. And I've had such, from the very first time we met, Pastor and I had a sense of connection. Uh, but every time we get together, and we had, we had lunch today, uh, the fellowship is strong. Uh, you know, we were born and raised in different areas of the world, but we share the same values. Uh, it's kingdom values. You understand kingdom values are the same no matter what culture you're in. Righteousness is righteousness anywhere in the globe. That's the way it, holiness is holiness everywhere in the globe. Faith is faith everywhere in, in the globe. Uh, now, food isn't. <laughs> Some places have better food than other places still. And I don't know why I have not gotten any jerk chicken since I have been here. Ooh, that's just wrong, isn't it? I could preach better if I had had... All right, all right, I got to get, gotta get serious now. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you tonight. This is going to be a night in which Christ is going to unveil or reveal himself to us. And you can have as much as you want. If you're hungry and thirsty for him, you can have a great revelation of Jesus tonight. And, and that revelation will be specific to whatever your need really is. He is not a God who is irrelevant. He's not going to show himself as a financer to a man whose finances are fine, but his health is bad. He'll show himself as a healer to that man. And the man who says, I'm very healthy, but I can't pay my bills, guess what he'll do? He'll show himself as one that provides for every material need. I'm telling you, I believe Jesus is here to reveal himself tonight. And he is complete. He is full. There's nothing about him that is at lack. Anything you could hunger for, anything you could desire, he is unto you. Even a desire for him. When I meet people who tell me that, that Christianity is boring, then I realize the problem is that they've never had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus is anything but boring. Now, I've met a lot of people that are boring. And some people that are almost miraculous because they can make the presentation of the word boring. And I'm thinking, how can you do that? But when you talk about the one who created the colors in the rainbow. Come on. He made the eagle to fly. This one who is the wisdom of the ages. Let me tell you, there's nothing boring about him. Amen. He'll produce a hunger and a thirst within your soul for who he is once you encounter him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And yet his mercies are new every morning. There's always a freshness about God that creates that stir within us. So at times in services, even like this, I hear people say, well, you know, uh, like maybe we've announced a particular feature for the night. Maybe we'll say tonight we're going to have a night where we're going to pray with people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they'll say, well, I already got that, so I'll just stay. I need uh, like a microphone. Uh, while there is great things that God does on feature nights, healing, anybody want to be healed tonight? Do you need, do you, anyone need a miracle tonight, really, of healing? W wave at me. Do you need a miracle tonight of healing? Do you actually need one? If you do and you're hungry for it, you'll get it. Because the healer is here. Amen. The healer is here. Now, if you just say, well, we'll see what happens, you probably won't see anything at all. But if you ha zero in on something, you'll, you you'll get it because Jesus is just that way. Um, I always tell people, I told you last night, pick out God to do. Tonight, in this room. Come on. No more depression. All right? Come on. Uh, no more back pain. Uh, no more vision problem. Whatever it is, pick out something for God to do. And then look for that moment that he'll come to you. Because if there's anything that I ever pray for, it's the thing that I'm already talking about. And that is the revelation of the Lord. Because he'll show you himself. Somehow, some way, he'll connect with you. And before you leave this room tonight, you'll have an encounter with God that will bring a change unto you. It'll take you to another 
uh, another great level in him. By the way, thank you for your giving. Your support of our ministry is never taken for granted, always valued. I appreciate that so very much. We have a, a great day Sunday ahead of us. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward again Sunday morning doing what we, what we talked about, and that is to have a service for everybody to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, I believe that's essential. You know, you got loved ones, friends. Maybe you have family members that have not yet received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Get them, get them in here. But let me tell you, even when you've got what the feature of that announcement is, here's what I found, that when I take time in the presence of God, and hear this very plainly, and let me say it another way, you never spend time in the presence of God and it was wasted time. Every moment in God's presence is a profitable moment. But there comes in services, and even like these, even if it's a healing night and you're perfectly well, uh, what, what happens in services like this is there comes moments of impartation where God will communicate or open to you a dimension of faith, a place of grace, and a place of power that even if it wasn't a hurting in your body you needed to be healed, you're ready for when that day comes or you'll know how to minister that to someone else. And, you know, uh, you, should, you, sh you should receive everything that God has, but it's not just about receiving, it's also about pouring out. Hmm? That was an amen spot. You missed that one, didn't you? It's not just about getting it, and you should get it, but it's also about pouring out. And so I trust that you receive both tonight. A touch of God for yourself, but also that which is enough to pour out on yet another. Now, I have a text before me. It's found in the book of uh, 1 Kings, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. I'm going to begin reading at verse 41 in just a moment. I'll give you a moment to locate that. 1 Kings, um, chapter 18, verse 41. Whenever there's something that I want to receive of the Lord, well, there's something I've desired of him. Uh, if it's a need in my life or just a desire to go to another level or, or an inquiry of how things function within his kingdom, here, here's what I do. Um, I, I don't just go to him and pray about it. I do pray. I spend a great deal of time in prayer. But I, but I don't just go to him and say, oh, Lord, I want this, I want this, I need this, I need this, or help me with this, help me with this. What, what I actually do first, before I, ever, before I would ever go to him in prayer, I first go to his word. And I go to his word for this reason. God, and talking to God, if I talk to him from his point of view rather than my point of view. If I come to him with his ideas rather than my ideas. So instead of going to God and trying to, like a salesman, try to pitch him the idea of what I think he should do for me, what I, what I prefer to do and what I found is way better is to go to his word and, and I look to, for three areas. I look, number one, has he made any promises in reference to what I need or what I'm desiring? Because when I find a promise of God, what I find in that promise is what he will do. You must understand that the promises of God, amongst many things, reveal to us the will of God. God doesn't promise to do. Did you get that? So I know people say, well, I know we promise. Don't ever pray if it's your will, if it's a promise. If it's a promise, then that's why he promised that, all right? So when I have a need in my life, what I do is I don't just go to God and say, I want it, I want it, I need it, I need it. Or I go to him first by going to the word. And I look to see, has he made any promise? The next thing I'll also look for is, is it, is it part of any of his covenants? Has he made covenant in this thing? Because covenants show us the ways of God. While, while promises may show us his will, covenant shows us his ways because covenant has to do with the idea of a contract or an agreement or a deal. So now you find how God works, works this thing out with people, how he steps them through the process. So I look to his covenants and I say, has the, is what I desire, is that part of any of the covenants of the Almighty God? And then... Another thing that I do, and I don't do any one or all three of these, is if there's something I desire or I'm, I need of the Lord, I look for places in the scripture where it's being done. Uh, uh, where, there, where, where it's happening. I say, well, this is what I need God to do. Has he ever done it? 
Is there any evidence in Scripture he's, he's done this kind of thing? And then when I find that there is a place where you see him doing that, then what I do is I sit there. I soak there. I meditate. I don't just read it. I will read it. I'll read it again and again. And I'll study it. But I'll do more than just read it and study it. I'll actually soak there and sit there until, until it opens up to me. Uh, I, was, I was trained... Uh, I may be speaking in tongues to you right now. I don't know, depending on what your background is in, uh, in the full gospel world. But I was trained by some of the old voice healing guys, uh, the old tent healers, you know. Uh, those were the guys that kind of took me under their wing and really marked my life. There were others, but they were the heavy influence within my life. And one of them in particular was my mentor. I call him my spiritual father. And this is something, and I worked with him uh, when I was in my teen years. I, I started traveling when I was 15. And, uh, and prior to that is when I was under his covering. And he would say something to me again and again and again, and this is what he would tell me. He would say, Dale, when you read the word of God, never read God's word just to see what he says. You need to know that. But don't read the word just to find out what he says. Stay there until you know why he said it. He said God has reasons for the things that he said and the things that he does. But if you don't understand his heart, you may never understand his hand. Now, does that make sense to you? You get what he was looking at? So, so I, I can't help myself to this very day when I open Holy Scripture and I read about God doing something or making a promise or saying something, I don't just, uh, I always, I, I always find myself now automatically just saying to him, now why would you say that or why did you do that? It's not a critical question. It's not, well, I don't think you should have done that. That's not the way I'm approaching him. That's not even in my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm wanting to get into his heart. Why would you do something like that? Why did you act in that way? And I found that, and that's where you take the time and meet with the God of Scripture rather than just know the information of the book. Did I say that too fast, or did you get that? We, we have a lot of people that have a lot of information in them from Scripture, but they don't know the person. It's the person of the Word that transforms your life. All right? So, uh, so anyhow, uh, all, all of that is to, set, to say this. I'm going to take you now by example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to walk through a passage with the prophet Elijah. And I want, you to, I want you to see the operation of faith, how it functions in the life of a guy, and I want you to see how it happens, how it functions before the miracle, in the process of the miracle, and then the after result of that. And I did it just by looking, watching, and reading, and, and meditating that, and just seeing this thing. And maybe you'll get an idea of that, because I believe tonight that God's going to impart to us miraculous ability. Come on and insights to the spiritual realm in that way. So you found it by now, uh, 1 Kings 18. In fact, if you haven't found it by now, God bless you, you never will. So I'm just going to read. Uh, but, but the context of the setting, and maybe I should give you that, is this. This is a setting where, uh, under the direction of God, Elijah has shut up the heavens that there would be no rain. And it's been that way now for over three years. And now God has spoken to the prophet and said it's time for rain to come. Uh, but he's not just going to bring rain because Israel is in a state of confusion. They're, they're not even sure who God is. They've been serving, a lot of them, uh, uh, this idol called Baal, all right? And so when the rain comes, Elijah or, or the Lord God Almighty doesn't want them to think that Baal may have done it. So here's how it's going to work out. Elijah calls King Ahab and Israel together, and he says, it's time for the rain, but you need to know who's going to bring the rain. So in order to determine who really is God, here's what we'll do. We'll build two sacrifices. We'll build an altar, two sacrifices, and we'll bring everything for the sacrifice except the fire, and then we're going to have the real God light up his own, all right? And you know this story, how that Elijah had the prophets of Baal go first, and, and away they went, and they went for hours on the end trying to get Baal to ignite the sacrifice, but nothing happened, nothing because he isn't there. And then here's what you found out. Elijah takes a few, just a few moments there before the presence of the Almighty God, and the fire of God comes and literally consumes the sacrifice and, and, and the wood and, and the stones. Hello. And he also drowned the thing in water. All right. And so all that takes place. And when he finishes, he now executes 450 of the prophets of Baal. And, 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 and now he's going to take this moment where 
He's going to climb up Mount Carmel, or as they say it in Israel, Mount Carmel, and the rain is going to come. I want you to see how the rain came. So 1 Kings 18, maybe you'd enjoy standing with me in honor of reading scripture. I'll read beginning at verse 41. 1 Kings 18. And Elijah said to Ahab, go eat and drink. For there is a sound of a heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel and he bent down to the ground and he put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servants, and he went up and looked. There's nothing there, he said, seven times. Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. There you go. Now, did you read the text or did you get in the picture? If when you read scripture, all you do is read words, you may not see what's happening. But you have to let it unfold before you and visualize it. You understand words are designed to do that. I'm kind of teaching tonight. You understand words are designed to do that. This is around the world, no matter where you've grown up, you understand the human mind does not think in language. It thinks in pictures. It's the way the brain operates. All right? So what if I say dog... You don't think D-O-G because that's not the way your brain thinks. When I said dog, you saw an animal. If I want to, if I've got a very specific image within me and I want to get it across to you, that's, it's, it, it will be done by words, but words that create pictures. Did you understand what I just said? So if I'm thinking of a big dog, not a small dog, then I'll say big dog. But when I say big dog, you don't think B-I-G-D-O-G because your brain doesn't think in language. It thinks in pictures. You just... Just right now, when I said big dog, that removes all the small ones. If I say the big black dog with the pearly white teeth around your leg, you get the picture, don't you? Because we think in images. That's why one philosopher made a statement that I have quoted around the world in every culture and never had to finish the sentence. As I've never met a group of people that hadn't heard it and didn't understand it. He said that a picture is worth, everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. I've said it in Europe. I've said it in Africa. I've said it in Mexico and, and, and throughout North America because that's the way the brain actually thinks. When you read the word of God, if you're really getting it, it will open up to you in picturesque form. So make sure when you read this book, you don't read it like you read a newspaper. You need to let the Holy Spirit take picture, the image. You want me to get religious with you? It's not really religious, but let me get biblical with you. Let him take the image of the person of the word and open that up unto you. You may be seated. Thank you. So let's look at it again. Here you got it. Elijah has received the directive of the Lord to Bring forth rain. He's going to stop this drought. He comes in the opening of our text to this moment where he turns to the king and he says to him, uh, go eat and drink. In other words, take a break, guy. For there is a sound of a heavy rain. Now, now watch what's going on. There's a so much in this picture. First of all, he's taking the who is considered the authority in the world at that point. That's what a king was looked at in those days. In fact, a lot of kings even would present themselves almost as being like gods. And people would have to you know, bow to them, and some of them wanted them to pray to them. And, and, and Elijah turns to this guy, and he says, you can go ahead and just have lunch now. We won't need you. And then he says, for there's a sound. of a heavy rain. Now you've got to understand, um, 
He knew what the will of God was before he even ascended that mountain to pray. Some people aren't sure whether God is going to do it or not after they do pray. But here's a guy that is saying a number of significant things. First of all, he's saying to the king, I'm about to go up the mountain and pray, and what I'm going to do is pray about rain. And by the way, if we pray about rain, rain is what's going to happen. Before he even walked into the place of prayer, he knew the answer. Now, that happens not out of arrogance. That happens out of knowing God. It happens out of walking with God in such a way that you know when you approach his presence what the outcome is going to be. Wow. Come on, guys. This year, I told you, I think last night we had the joy of with, since January, um, a little over 12,000 people that have come unto repentance. Now, I go into cities, uh, not here in North America, but overseas, where there's very few Christians in the whole, in the whole city. Sometimes as little as two percent of the whole city. They'll be either Islamic or uh, uh, heavy tribal worship. Where I'm at in Africa. Uh, you say, well, what do you think God will do? I already know. And it's not an arrogance. I already know. People are going to get saved. Well, how do you know? Because Jesus is a Savior. Now listen, you need to hear what I just said. He's a Savior. It's not a matter of do you think it can happen. It, it has to happen. He's a Savior. You can't get the Savior in the midst of people and then nothing takes place. Come on, guys. You need to have faith like that. And I expect that. I fully, I'm not surprised when people get saved. I would actually be, be surprised if they didn't. Really, I'd be surprised if they... I've never seen it happen. It will always happen because he is Lord. Someone needs to be waving a hanky right about now. Yeah. Elijah turns and says to the king, it's been three years, no rain, and he says, you know what? We're going to get some rain now. That's it. I watched what it's like as I'm observing Elijah, how a man functions in faith and how he functions in the spirit, in the prophetic. And there is a sense of a walk with God that precedes even the moment of prayer. If, if we would walk with him daily, then our time spent with him would not be in such question. Now, the second thing I notice, and this is actually maybe the more prominent one that's really known in the text, is this is, and that is this. He turns to the king and he says, um, there's a sound of a heavy rain. Now, some people would say, well, it was a very positive confession of faith. And you could look at it that way if you like, but it's much more than that. When he said, there's a sound of a heavy rain, there was no thundering going on. There was no lightning taking place. There was no strong wind blowing from the change of temperature. You must understand, there was not even a cloud in the sky. Am I right? A little later, he's going to burn his buddy's sandals off trying to find a cloud. But at that point, skies are wide open. But he says, there's a sound of a heavy rain. Let me explain something about the prophet, and then let me explain something about you that are born of the Spirit, where you pass from death unto life. You have a set of senses that are not of this world. There is a reflective of them in this world. But do you understand that there is more to be seen than what these eyes can see? And it's not metaphoric, it's in reality. There's more in the room than what you can see with your eyes right now. And you can hear things that natural men cannot hear. The prophet could see, the prophet could hear in the dimension of the spirit similar to what you would hear in this natural world. When he said there's the sound of abundance of rain, he could hear it. He could hear it. I don't think that's crazy. Listen, there's a day coming where we're going to hear a trumpet sound. 
I don't think it's going to be heard by every guy on the street. But we're going to hear it. Are you in this room right now? We're going to hear it. And, and it, it won't be like, oh, you think you heard that? I'm going to tell you, it's, be, it's going to be a clarion call. It sure as can be. And, this, and you must understand this also, that everything that happens, any, everything that happens does not begin in this world. It begins in him. It all starts with him and where he is, and he is spirit. That means everything that you know begins in the spiritual realm. This physical, natural world came forth from the spiritual realm. When there was no tangible earth, he said, let it be, and it became. That's how it is. And so, if you want to know how to walk, function fully as you're designed to function, so many Christians, when they get an answer to prayer, they're shocked. Didn't see it coming. The response, the first response isn't praise God. The first response is, I can't believe it. They're amazed at it. And some people even think it's a great testimony. People testify. I bet you have too. They'll testify in church, you know. They'll say, you know, we've all been praying about something. You know the struggle I've been going through for the last five years, you know. Well, let me tell you something. Just last Sunday night, God came through, and I can't even tell you how. He just did it. And we think that's a great testimony. I don't even know what he did. I don't know how it happened. It just happened. Oh, praise God. Well, you know, it's not that we know and have figured out the Almighty, but you know what? Maybe that's not the best testimony. Maybe the better testimony would be, you know what I've been going through the last five years? God came and worked with me on Sunday night, and he worked a miracle. L let me tell you how. Let me tell you how. Because if you can't tell them how, you'll never be able to lead them into this thing. Are you getting this? Elijah, he heard it. And I'm going to tell you something. When you became born of the Spirit, you say, well, that's a prophet. Yeah, but when you became born of the Spirit, you became different. You came alive on the inside. You got another set of ears. And they're not deaf until you go to heaven. You got another set of ears. You're alive on the inside. You got eyes to see things right now that these natural eyes cannot see. You know, when I die and these natural eyes are no more, I will not be blind. You all know that, don't you? When, when, when this physical body dies, I, I, I'm not going to be like deaf. I'll, I'll yet have your ears to hear. In fact, quite frankly, we'll hear like we've never heard before. You need to awaken to the spiritual dimension that is within you. Wake up to it. That's how you're going to move with God. Elijah did. And before he even ascended the mountain, hmm, I can hear it, he says. I hear the sound of a heavy rain. Yeah. He goes up the mountain. And uh, by, the, by the way, you, let me sh say something. He sends the king away and he ascends Mount Carmel. I've been up that twice now. was up it again just in April of this year, but I went up in a car. Uh, that's quite a climb. I'm, I'm making an observation of how people function that function in the spirit. Sometimes, if you're going to function in the spirit, you have to separate yourself from others. And, you, and I'll tell you, the easy way to do it is just to go higher. Because when you go higher, you'll separate the men from the boys. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are those that will not go with you. They'll shout at the bottom, but as soon as there's some effort, if there is effort, well, that's another story. But he ascends that mountain, separating himself from all others. He and his assistant will go to the top. And then, now I want you to watch what Elijah did. When he gets to the top, he bows down to the ground, he puts his face, one writer says, between his knees. He bows way down. And we know it's at that point 
that he touches God. Now, I'll just make a statement on this and move along. I, I'm, some people get all wound up about process and method and style, and they make a religion out of it, which is not a healthy thing, you know. One of the classic things you've heard people say that have been around churches for long, when something is done differently, they'll say, well, that's not the way it's done in our church. And bless their heart, a lot of times it's not being done in their church anyhow, but that's, I won't go that route. But Elijah, when he got up to the top of Carmel, he, 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 he sat down on the ground, and the scripture tells us he put his face between his knees. I, uh, I remember a, a lady one time, and she was a great lady of prayer, but, uh, and uh, and when, and, but when she would talk about praying and getting serious, she'd say, we, now we need to pray. We need to pray. And she'd say, and I mean on our knees. Now, see, that, that's when she thought you were really, if you got on your knees, you were really serious. And here's the deal. I do, I love to pray, and I spend a, a great deal of time, segments of time in prayer, an easy two hours. And my, my problem is, is if I get on my knees for two hours, I can't get back up again. They get sore at least within the, about 15 minutes. You know what I'm talking about? And, and so, but and Elijah, he got down and, and he put his face between his knees. Now, I'm glad that, I'm glad it's not method. I'm glad it's not method because, you know, bless your heart, some of us, if we had to get our face between our knees, God help us. Uh, some of us haven't seen our knees in 20 years, much less get our head between them. If we did that, we would really need a miracle, wouldn't we? And, oh, Lord. Take, take that off the CD. Don't, don't, don't. Are you okay? All right, anyhow, he positions himself before God. And this is what I mean by position. I'm not really talking so much about, you know, that he got his face between his knees. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, when, he, when he got down on the ground and he put his face down there, he rises up. And he turns to his servant. Now watch this happen. He turns to his servant and he said, go look out toward the sea. Now, if you've ever been up on Mount Carmel, you will understand that the mountain is not on the, sh on the shore. It's not, it's not just right, just barely off the shore either. So if you've ever been up there, here's what, you'll, here's what it will kind of look like. You'll have, you'll have uh, mountains and ravine, mountains and ravine. You got that? Mountains and ravine, mountains and mountains and ravine, just like, just like this, just like what I'm doing. And then right about here, segment about whatever that angle would be, you can look out toward the sea. It's not like the sea's all over here. It's just right about there. When he gets up from prayer, he does not say to the servant, you see any clouds? Any clouds out there? You see any clouds? Look around. You see any clouds? He doesn't do that. He says, look right over there. Now let me tell you what's happened. At the base of the mountain, he heard the rain coming. At the top of the mountain, he saw the rain. coming from right over there. When the guy went out and came back and he said, I don't see anything, he didn't say, then let's look over here. He just said, go back. I prayed again, but you better read the book. He didn't, he didn't. He didn't pray seven times. He just kept sending the guy back. Look at that. I've heard preachers say all my life, I've heard him say, Elijah prayed again, and he prayed again, and he prayed. He did not. He did not. He got on his face. Look, let, let me, let me. Boy, you got so much stuff up here. Wow. Um, how can I do this without knocking something over? Um, if you want to see God, you're not going to see God like this. That's not how you see God. If you want to see God, you're going to see him like this. Would you all understand that? You've got you to gotta get low. You've got to put, you, you, you got to get on your face before him. Quit strutting. 
So the prophet gets down, and when he got down there, he saw it. And it was opened up to him. The vision, the picture, the understanding of it came right through, right through. And he said, right over there. Now, the interesting thing was, was the guy came back and he said, well, I don't see anything there. What do you do with that? Well, maybe I didn't hear from God. No, no, he knew he heard from God. What do you do? He said, just go look again. The guy came back and he says, there's nothing there. He said, well, you better take another look. And he comes back and says, and Elijah said, what did you see? I'm playing it up a little bit. Can you let me do that? What did you see? He said, I saw blue skies. He said, that's not what it looks like. It doesn't look like that. See, he, he knew what he was looking for. Did you hear what I just said? He knew exactly what he was. If you're going to move in the spirit, you've got to know what you're looking for. You've got to know it. Or you won't know what to see. In fact, you'll see something and not even know what you're looking at. You'll walk right by it. There's blue skies out there. They're pretty, pretty. That's not what it looks like, buddy. Go look again. Oh, what do you see? Well, I saw no clouds. That's not what it looks like. Better take another look. You say, well, how many times you got to look? Elijah looked until he saw in the natural what he had seen in the spirit. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. I was meditating this very verse when the Spirit of God spoke these simple words to me. He said, Dale, uh, Satan will not be able to discourage you with nothing. You understand that a lot of people have been discouraged with nothing? I mean, they uh, say, God, I need some help to be able to pay my bills, and then they, uh, then they look in their pocket, and, <laughs> and there's nothing. And they get discouraged. And you get the idea. It's not just monetarily. It can be in anything. You're looking for a change in your marriage. You see nothing. You're looking for a change in your health. Nothing. Nothing. The Holy One said to me, Dale, the devil will never be able to discourage you with nothing when I have given you something to look for. So I look for my answers first here, and then I look for them there. I don't look for my answers first here. I look for the answers first in him. And I mean that with all clarity, I wait before his presence until he shows me himself and he shows me his way. And when that happens, then I know what to look for. And, and then, if it's a case where you look toward to see and you see nothing, you say, well, what do you do? You just go look again. Because you've already seen this thing. Now, when, when the man returned the seventh time, his report is this, I see a cloud rising out of the sea, right at the horizon line, way out. Well, I see a cloud rising out, size of a man's hand. Now, all of us Christians read that story, we start shouting, oh, glory to God, there it is. You know, but, but wait just a minute now, think about it. Think about it. Be in the picture. He's already told the king, go take a break, we're going to get rain. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. And now he's got a cloud this big on the horizon to rain the whole planet. Hello. Am I helping you tonight? I've seen Christians where they get, you know, they pray for something and they've got pain all over their body and when they get through, they, uh, you know, they... Uh, they, they, they got, like, no pain in their hand now. And they, well, I don't know. Think something happened? I don't know. Wait just a minute. Has it started? Do you, know what you're, do you even know what you're looking at? Do you know what you're looking at? Remember, everything begins in the spirit, and then it shows here in the natural. It doesn't start in the natural. Sometimes when we pray with people, and there's been visible miracles that have happened before their eyes. 
We've had people with bowed legs and they straighten right out, or a short leg, it lengthens right out, or a growth that just disappears. I had a lady tell me in one of our meetings in the New England portion of the United States, her husband was filled with cancer. He had, I, I, you couldn't miss him. I, I sent, it was an opening Sunday morning. I'd never been in the place before. And I looked out across the audience. It was a very large church. And, and literally, literally from one half of his face over, it was totally to the back of his head, was covered in bandages. You couldn't see any skin spot anywhere. It was just one half all the way over. And the pastor told me, he said, this guy has been has cancer all over, and they had a huge growth in, on the side of his face. And they took it out, and they told his wife two things. They said, first of all, we, we don't believe we got it all. Number two, when we take the bandages off, just brace yourself, because it's not going to look good. He's going to be a mess. He had a tumor on his back about the size of an orange. And when I began to call out the miracles and I told people like I have in many services here, put your hands wherever the need was, she reached up and put her hand on his back and literally, literally cupped that tumor because you could hold it like this. It was that big. It was one of many. She said, as you prayed, it disappeared right in my hands. I just felt it melt right away and go down to nothing. They were in the testimony moment saying look what God has done she said I don't know what has happened in the other places all I can tell you is I had my hand on that huge tumor and it faded away right in my hand I believe God's done the same for the rest they knew what they were looking at they knew what they were looking at um, when they took the bandages off and I was there he came back in if if you got very close to him and you looked with an intense eye you could see a faint line right here on his cheek that was absolutely it at 10 feet away you wouldn't have seen it at all what an incredible miracle and he was clean free from cancer from head to foot from head to foot. I see cloud out on the horizon, the size of a man's hand. Everything begins in the spirit. It breaks forth in the natural. So sometimes when people see things like this, uh, they begin to change. Uh, they'll say, oh, look, 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 God's starting to move. God's not starting to move. This, God's finishing his move. Did you understand that? Because the natural is not the starting line, it's the finish line. Everything begins in him. In the beginning was the word. Not in the beginning there was light, not in the beginning was a chaotic earth. In the beginning was the word. Everything begins in him. If you will come into his presence in him, you will see all things. Once you see them there, you can begin to look for them in this world. You can start behaving, moving, speaking in such a way because you have been in there, you've been in the presence where they are, and now you step into the realm and where they shall be. That's why when Abram got into the presence of the Almighty God, yet believing for an Isaac, yet when he got with God, he said God was speaking about Isaac as though he already was. He spoke of those things that be not as though they were. That's because they were to him. They were already there, and he knew it. And then it broke forth in this world. You must come to the place that you come into the presence of God. Walk with him. I'm talking about, I'm talking about you, come on. I'm not talking about people that will just get a healing tonight. I'm talking about those of you that want to move in the spirit. You want to go there? You want to move there or do you just want to get blindsided by stuff? If you want to move with God, you have to walk with him. You have to get before his presence. You got to listen for his voice. You got to listen for the sounds of heaven. They're there. They can be heard. They can be heard. You need to start looking for them. Intently look. Look in your heart. Look in the spirit. Spend time before his presence. Let the inner vision of God open up to you or any other way that he may unfold that to you because it may come in a myriad of ways. Sometimes it'll come just through his written scripture because the word of the Lord creates pictures in people's eyes and you'll see it right there. It'll stand right out to you. It'll be more than just a text. It'll be more than just a devotional read. That word will jump out at you. Have you ever had that happen? Where you open this holy book, I've got to tell you, this book is alive. It is alive. 
It's different than any other read. It's different than any novel that you'll ever read. It's, it's, it, it's different than any other article that's ever been written. This word is alive and it's powerful. It's extraordinary. And as you come before that word, sometimes the picture will come right out like that to you. I'm not talking about going into a trance. I don't know. That could happen too, though. Happened to Peter. But what I am saying is you shouldn't live this life as you're doing it in this natural realm. You should walk in this natural realm with a sense of connection of what's happening in the spiritual realm where you're picking up things that other people have no clue of what's going on. And it happened. It happened with that man. He, he saw it. And therefore, when the guy came back and he said, we've got a cloud this big out on the horizon, he didn't say, well, what are we going to do with that? Cloud that big, that's not even big enough to raise uh, to rain a good chia pet. How are we we gotta rain the planet? Don't you have something better for me than that? Now, as soon as he saw even the beginning, he knew what was happening. It was breaking forth. Heaven and earth were intersecting, and the window had been open. And he said, listen, you better tell the king that if he doesn't get moving, this thing's going to stop him. What, what, what thing? That, that hand-sized cloud out on the horizon? Yeah, that's right. Tell him. See, because he, he'd already seen it. He heard it at the bottom. And at the top, he saw the clouds filling the sky. And he saw the huge rain. And as soon as there was the first indicator of it, he said, it's happening right now. It's happening here right now. Tell the king to get moving. Praise God. And the rain came. Now listen to me here. And the rain is here. Hmm? Did you hear what I just said? And the rain is here here. Would you stand with me all over the house right now? Oh, glory to God. Come on, you that have desired ooh, the answer of the Lord, would you, now whatever it is, if it's financial, if it's emotional, relational, your family, if it's health, I know there's all kinds of healing miracles that are here tonight. If you may have something nothing to do with healing. Don't think, oh, well, I, this is a healing night, so I can't get my home taken care of or something like that. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, you can go ahead and get that right now because the gift of God is here, Christ Jesus. He's here, and he's open to you. Would you just lift your hands and begin to worship him like we did last night? Worship him, and I want you to worship him like we did last night in keeping with what your desire or need was. No generic praise. Tell him, tell him who he is. Tell him who he is. Tell him that he is indeed your hope. Tell him that he is indeed your health. Tell him, come on, do it. Worship him right now. Worship him right now. Tell him who he is. He's the almighty God. Nothing's impossible with him. And in this very moment, the miracles of God are coming across this great auditorium here in Brampton in the Toronto area. There's miracles that are happening for people right now in this room. I want you to open your spirit and receive the gift of God that's happening. You exalt him, magnify him. Don't tell him about your pain. Tell him about his solution. Tell him about his suffering. Come on, tell him about his gift. The blood was shed. The blood was shed that you would be whole, whole in Jesus' name. There's great miracles happening. And then I want you to respond to that. Don't just think about it. and Don't just say, I'm going to believe it. I want you to respond to it. I'm going to give you a moment where we can respond together like we did last night, a point of contact where we lock in the miracle of God to you. Please bless him right now. Exalt him. Jesus, I worship you. We have someone that can help me in the piano. Please come. Please come at this time. Uh, give me some help in some way. Lord, I bless you. I honor the name that's above every name. I worship you, who is the king of glory. Come on, glorify him right now. You that have had emotional needs, tell him, you're the prince of peace. Tell him that. You're the joy of my life. The fruit of the spirit is joy. Giving that unto me, I exalt you. I exalt you and magnify you. I glorify you in this very way, Jesus. Boy, I sense the healing power of God. I sense the delivering power of the Lord right now. 
Come on, you that have, you that have had problems in your marriage and you're believing God for that miracle, or, or maybe it's between you and your children or somehow in the family, your parents, would you do it right now? Rejoice in him. You're the, you're the, uh, you're the wonderful counselor. That's who you are. You're the Prince of Peace. That's who you are. You're the one who knows how to calm the storm. That's who you are. I worship you. I worship you and extol you and magnify you. Would you bless him? Here's healing coming in that way. Healing the homes, healing the relationships. Oh God, I see it now more clearly than I've seen it so far this week. I see the gift of God coming. You that need healing in your body, come on, tell him. Tell him who he is. Magnify him. You got to see him. Quit looking at your problem. Look at the answer. Look at the Christ. Let him fill the scope of your vision. You who abhor our sicknesses and carried away our diseases, I worship you. You whose name is healing, Jehovah Rapha, I worship you. There's healing in your name. There's healing in your nature. You're the one that healed every sickness and every disease among the people. There was no plague, no disease that could say no. You made the blind to see, the deaf to hear. You cleansed the leper in a moment, right in front of the eyes of people. They were transformed, not just cured, they were made whole. Body parts were restored. Skin was cleansed. Wow, that's who you are. You've never changed the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the one who's forgiven all of our iniquities. You've healed all our diseases. All, 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 all of them. Not some of them, not for a precious few, but for every one. Come on, do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see his provision? Do you see your wholeness in him? Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are, and you, you, you are complete. You are complete. He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you, look at you, you're complete in him. You're free from every bondage. There's a flow of God's healing that's hitting this room right now. Some of you have already gotten your miracle. You got it before I ever came to the end of the message. But it's real strong right now. I'm telling you, there are people that came in here in pain that do not have pain right now. It's already happened. It's already, and you need to look for it. You need to look for the difference in you. It's already happened. There are people, I think, that are hearing me different than when you came on in. God's opened your ears. Ringing in the ears have stopped. Roaring. Tenesis. Some people call it tinnitus. Tenesis is being healed in Jesus' name. Receive a miracle in your ears right now. I rebuke the spirit of deafness and put it out in the name of Jesus. Like when hearing be excellent. No frequency loss, no muffling sound, and definitely no deafness at all. I even create eardrums and make all things new for your ears. Now, there's a couple of things I saw of the Lord. That, you know, I talk about the streams of healing. I saw the healing of God coming for people with digestive issues. And what I just said, just grab someone in their heart. If you've dealt with digestive problems, and particularly what I saw was acid reflux. If you've dealt with that, your healing's here tonight. Some of you already got it because I saw it early on. I didn't see it at the end. I saw it early on. Uh, if you've dealt with any kind of digestive issue, now I saw acid reflex, but I know when I see it, it's bigger than what I'm looking at. So you may say, Dale, mine's not that, but I, I deal with, with allergies, like gluten allergies or, or things of that, or I got a di digestive problem. I've got, I've got uh, uh, ulcers in my stomach, diverticulitis. I got you. Uh, I saw it, though. I saw it as acid reflex, but when I said, Lord, what I'm looking at, he said, Dale, it's digestive problem. There's all kinds of digestive problems. There's healing that's happening in this room. Come on, if you needed that miracle, put your hand right in that abdominal area. Because uh, some of you already got it. You may come on here bloated or distressed, and you know that it's already gone. It's already gone. You need to grab it. 
own it. Don't just say, I'm not, I believe God's going to do that someday. You'll be sick with this the rest of your life. This is your moment right now. Put your head right on that stomach area and grab your miracle. Grab your miracle right now. No more digestive illness in this house. Be able to and digest all healthy foods normally right now in Jesus' name. No more hiatal hernias. Be healed in Christ's name. I close up those hernias right now. Be cured of acid reflex. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Come on, right now in Jesus' name. You'll know it. You'll know it. Well, Dale, I don't have acid reflex now. Yes, but you'll have a witness of God that he's touching you. Look for the move of God upon you. Right there. Come on, no more digestive problems. Even in the intestinal tract, be healthy and be well. No more polyps, no diverticulitis. Be completely healed. No, 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 no colon disease. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anything, everything. Come on, even hemorrhoids. I don't care, even if you've had a colostomy or an ileostomy, be healed in Jesus' name. I'm talking digestive stuff. There are, there are no limits right now. Did you hear that? There are no limits. Be completely well. Completely well. Now, there was another significant flow of healing that I picked up on. I'm going to describe it to you now. Someone walks into the house and says, you know what? We just found out that my son is a heroin addict. All the saints are going to say, let's get on our face and let's trust God for his deliverance. Let's, we've got to fast and pray. We're going to believe God to break that thing. Someone else comes in and says, I just found out I got cancer. And they tell me I'm not going to live to the end of the year. Oh, boy, we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to believe God with you. We're going to stand in faith in Jesus' name. Let someone else come in and say, you know, I got a broken heart. And we say, suck it up, buttercup. That's not the way it is. I heard the Lord say to me tonight, I'm going to heal people of broken hearts. I don't know if you know this. I, I, well, actually, I think you do know it. When Jesus outlined his ministry, when, when the announcement was made from heaven at his water baptism, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He goes into the wilderness for 40 days and nights. He comes out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit in the Galilee. He goes into the synagogue and he's going to preach his first public recorded sermon. And he's going to say this. He's going to say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he's anointed me too. And when he says, he's anointed me too, the next thing that's going to happen is he's going to list his mission statement. There's going to be several things that he's going to tell us he's anointed to do. Do you remember the second thing on the list? The second thing on the list was to heal hearts that had been broken. Now he's going to talk about recovering sight of the blind. He's going to talk about many other things that he's here to do. But the number two thing on the list and in his mind was to heal hearts that had been broken. I believe that the healer of broken hearts is here right now. And I think he's here healing hearts that have been broken from loss, maybe the loss of a child, maybe the loss of a spouse. I think he's here to hear hearts that have been broken because of the pain of divorce. Trust has gone. You lay awake at night thinking, was it me? And you're crushed within. I think the healer of broken hearts is here right now. Are you hearing me? For those that have gone through abuses, maybe from childhood, maybe in marriage, the healer of broken hearts is here right now. And as sure as he's healing people of physical illnesses, pains, back pains, stomach problems, hearing issues, I think he's also healing Come on, will you receive this? He's healing broken hearts right now across this room. 
reach out and take that. Would you please, don't miss this, don't miss this, don't miss this. This is for you. I have authority right now in the name of the Lord Jesus to shut the mouth of a lion, to stop the tormentor, the oppressor, the degrader, the one who presents no hope. I stop you right now in Jesus' name. For we have hope. We have the God of all hope. And we have the healer here right now, the healer of broken hearts. And I want to tell you in the mighty name of, in the mighty name of Jesus, come on, receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. Someone, you just put your hand right on your physical area of your heart. But receive the gift of God. And have joy where you've had despair. No more depression. Come on, no more sorrow day in and day out. He gives the oil of joy for mourning. Come on. The garments of praise. For the spirit of heaviness, be clothed right now. Be clothed right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, feel the wrapping of God around you. Delivering you from despair and a shattered heart. Have new hope. Come forth. Come forth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I know there's more healing than that, I, but I definitely saw digestive. I, I definitely picked up on ear issues, ringing, roaring, tinnitus, deafness. And I know he's healing broken hearts. But wherever else you may have a need, would you just put your hand there, please, right now? Wherever you say, Dale, it's none of those where my elbow's killing me. I don't know. I need a miracle. I got a problem with my liver. It's diseased. Whatever. You, what, come on. You know what I'm saying. Put your hand there. Put your hand there. And let me believe God with you from head to foot. And then please, before we go tonight, let me lock it in with you. I mean, I said, I don't know what you mean. I'll explain it in a minute. But this is a moment in which we experience the touch of God. And then we move to the place of responding to the touch of God. Right now, receive his touch and be whole from head to foot. From head to foot. Come on, wherever you have a need, put your hand there right now. If it's on your eyes, put it on your eyes. If you've got more than one area, start, I'm starting at the top. You just start at the top and keep going down. Everything in the head be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything, eyes, ears, come on, nose, throat, everything. All of that, all of that in the head area. Be completely healed. Your mouth, be completely well. And your throat and your neck be healed too. In the wonderful name of the Son of God. Receive that gift of God and be loosed in your neck. In Jesus' name, by the word of God, by the word of God, receive that gift right now. And in your shoulders, be healed. And your chest, be healed. Heart, circulation, lungs, all that, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the gift of God comes to you all the way through. Now in that whole core, be cured. Everything, everything right now, everything in the core. That means your, you know, your, your stomach as we've been addressing already. And I'm going to tell that liver be healthy. Every bladder be healthy right now. All bladder be healthy right now. All, all the bladders be healed right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Even the pancreas be healed. No more diabetes. Come on, it cause resurrection life to come into your pancreas. Balance that blood sugar right in Jesus' name. Be healed in your kidneys. Now, I got a real gentle sense of that. I think there's faith for someone to be healed in their kidneys right now or someone that you love. I feel the pull of God on that. Have health in your kidneys in Christ's name. In Christ's name. Also, all the way through that intestinal tract and down into your lower extremities, your legs. Look, no, look, no, more, uh, no more numbness in your feet. Wait, I'm seeing something right now. It's neuropathy. Be healed of neuropathy in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be completely healed. Come on, someone pray in the spirit with me. There's power happening right now in this way. Be healed of neuropathy in your extremities. Be completely cured. And there's something else I'm seeing, but I don't know how to describe it. Um, it's a nervous kind of illness. I can see it just as plain as can be. Be healed in Jesus' name. It causes great pain throughout your body, like a stinging, burning kind of thing. That's what I'm picking up on. It's a, it's a nervous thing. There's a name for it, but it's evading me. I can see the illness, though, and I see the power of God flowing for healing in it. 
in the wonderful name of Jesus, receive your gift and be completely whole, completely whole, completely whole in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Every disease, every sickness must go. Let's lock in what God is doing. Can we do that tonight like we did last night? Would that be all right? Would you do that with me? Let me do it with you, actually. You know, I, I'm not here to lay hands on the tonight for healing. Actually, I thought we were going to have a, a prayer line tonight at first, but I, then when, as the message unfolded, I saw so much else that God is doing. But for everybody that believes God has just given them an answer to prayer or a miracle, would you come to the front real quick and let me touch you and let me agree with you that you've got your answer? Would you come right now? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on. Come quickly. Come quickly. Meet me right here. Meet me right here. That's it. Come on. Amen. Come on. Don't be afraid to come. Don't be afraid to come. Especially those of you who had any kind of noticeable... Anybody that got a digestive order healed, I need to touch you right now. You believe God has done that. Anybody that had, and I don't need to know details, but if God's healing you of a broken heart, I need you here right now. This is going to end that darkness forever and that depression or that fear or that torment forever. Don't sit there and whine about it anymore. This is your moment. The gift of God has come. The gift of God has come. Beautiful. Beautiful. I know I didn't take a lot of time to explain what I'm doing, but... The scripture tells us so many things about when God is moving, how that our response to it is what is key to us actually providing the longevity of it, the, uh, where you continue to walk in the miracle. So when I come to you, I don't want a long testimony. That's not what this is about. Just simply say, my ear got healed tonight, or my eye got healed tonight, or my, I believe my stomach was healed tonight. I wonder if it was the brokenness of heart to say, God healed me of a broken heart tonight. Good enough. It, it may be a financial thing. Good enough, because I believe God's just met me. You know, some of us need to be delivered from the fear of lack, of lack. And there's great liberty in that. The power of God, amen, upon you. My brother, what do you believe Jesus has done? Okay, good. Is it gone now? Good. Well, then receive the gift. Good. The, the distress that was here tonight is already gone, Lord. It's a digestive miracle. Would you raise a hand of faith? sealed this and settled this in the blood of Jesus. Thank you for taking the distress out. More than that, we believe you've taken the, the issue out forevermore. Right now, you're definitely, you're, you, you've definitely got a miracle. That's a witness of God. That's the Holy Ghost and fire right there. Amen. Amen. Yes, dear, what did Jesus do? My, my shoulder did. Yeah. Yeah, and show me. Raise your hand and give glory to God for your answer tonight. Look at you. Come on. Forevermore be free and never deal with it again. Do you hear me? Never again now. The blood of a lamb has come and made you whole. It's the gift of God. That's good. Amen. Own your miracle there. I know you can do it. You can raise your hand. You can have no pain, but that's the, the done it. Amen. Yes, sir. What did Jesus do? I had, I've had a lot of losses over the years, and I believe I received healing for, for brokenness. I felt a lot of heat tonight. And did you? Okay, good. <laughs> then, then I agree with the witness of God on you, and your answer is given right there in Jesus' name. Boy, there is power on you, guy. I can pick up on it. Yes, dear, real loud. What did Jesus do? Uh, I'm healed with um, pain in my body. Really? And then when you are praying about healing with eyes and my, uh, I'm shivering, I believe that I'm here Come on. tonight in Jesus' So the name. pain's left your body. Yeah. Then the ears, yes. are they hearing better? Yeah. Ears and never have that pain in your bones again in Jesus' name. You know, it's a good deal to come in in pain and go without it. What do you think, huh? I like that. I like that. Yes, sir. What did Jesus do? Broken heart. I've okay. been struggling with Come on. For a long time. Did he, take, did he lift that off you tonight? It's, it's off. I'm right there with you. I agree. I say amen to that. That's just like you, Jesus. One moment in your presence, that which weights us down is taken off. Amen. Someone say amen with him on that. Good job. Praise God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. What did Jesus do? I had a shoulder pain, and I 
Come on. He did it today, didn't he? You need to bring it into the moment right here. You know, most of us, I told you last night, if you know how to get saved, you know how to get everything God does. Most of us can tell you when he did it and right where he did it. Because I can take you to the spot. Huh? I can take you to the day. That's what you're doing right now. Thank you, Lord. The, the, the pain that he's had in that shoulder and arm, you've relieved from him. But I don't think he got a painkiller. I think he got a cure. He's the God that has made all things well, not some things better. Boy, there's that same heat again. Do you feel it? My hands are on fire. This whole area is on fire. This is an, I, I feel that periodically, but this is really consistent tonight. The name of Jesus has made you whole. Thank God for your miracle. Be bold now and call it yours. I know you already did, but I say continue with that. Yeah, I got a pain in my shoulder. This is the shoulder the, the section, isn't it? The fear from the last. Uh huh. And also I got pain in my hip. I remember hip. that. Yeah. Things doing better in there now? Yeah, I feel a bit. Is it yours? What? Is it yours? Is the gift yours? No, I think it's a good Lord. Come on. Well, I got that, yes. <laughs> but he's given it to you, hasn't he? Beautiful. Good answer. <laughs> I bless you, sir, in Jesus' name, because his name has come to you in power and has set you free. Amen. Thank you. you are his. Do you understand that? You are his, and he is yours. Amen. Here, what did Jesus do? So, uh, I came here actually for my son's yes. um, healing from Good. autism disorder. And Good. every time I get put in prayer and fasting, I get some kind of infection in the throat uh, and uh -huh. in the ear. And um, from past five days, I've been having really pain. I was focused for his healing. Yes. But even I'm healed. Good. The pain is, yeah, it has left. Come on. And while I was praying, I, I asked God to show me the image. Like, I want to see him healed while he was praying. Amen. Out. And that image again appeared while, while we were Teaching about the cloud. Yes. And I know that my son is healed, and I just have to keep on looking. Now I'm going to I'm going to agree with you that very way. Amen. Thank you for taking away the suffering that was in like the sinuses, the ears, and the throat tonight, Lord. It just left. Been there for days. It left tonight during this preaching, because your word is healing us. The word of your power. And thank you for the picture that you put within my sister's spirit. I agree with her. I see that in Jesus' name. Wholeness, new, well, amen. That boy's whole in Christ's name. Oh, his and God. Yes, sir. Acid reflux. Yeah. You believe God's healed you? Yes. Can you tell the difference or wasn't it bother you tonight? When you started talking about it. Yeah. You know, oh, did you? You felt it come right through. Yes. Come on. No more acid reflux, God. Float through us. And we don't have it anymore. Now, that's just testimony. Prayer. Yes. Uh, when someone testifies to what God has done, you know, I told you I worked with Brother Lester Sumrall a couple of times. I had a couple of meetings at his church. I was on TV with him. We were out to dinner one time, and, and he said this to me. He said, uh, Dale, some time ago, I decided to believe the gospel. <laughs> and I thought, what's this? Now, it had been some unbelieving preacher, I would have said, good for you. But he was in his 70s at this point. I was in my 30s. So when he said, I decided to believe the gospel, first of all, I knew he didn't mean yesterday, all right? But he also, when I was a little kid, you know, because he started traveling like me in his teenage years. He didn't mean that. He said, I decided to believe the gospel. And he said it was actually during his years of pastoring. And he was sitting in the audience because they had been having a crusade go on. And people were up front and they were testifying of the answers of God. And someone got up and said, you know, I've been delivered from, from, uh, from chain smoking. I've been a smoker for years and years and years. Tonight the Lord has delivered me. I will never smoke again. And he says, I sat there and I said within myself, I said, well, that is, that's, just, that's very nice. That's wonderful. Praise God. But really, why don't you come back in about a week and tell us how you And then someone else got up and said, I was diagnosed with cancer. They said I had six months to live, but the Lord has healed me. I'm going to live and not die. I know I'm healed now. And he, and he said, I was sitting there in that pew, and I was thinking, that's wonderful. Pray, again, praise the Lord. But, you know, but really, why don't you go to your doctor and, and get checked up and come back with a report, and let's see how you're doing. And he said, right about that point, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Lester, you really don't believe the gospel, do you? 
He said, what, Lord? He said, you don't really... These people are testifying to what I say in my word that I do, but you're not willing to believe it until some other person identifies it. Wow. We were sitting, we were just him and I together at Notre Dame University eating, eating lunch after the morning service. And uh, he looked at me and he said, I repented right there and I said to God, Lord, I will believe the gospel. And when someone is confessing to something that you say you're doing, my first response is going to be, yes, sir, that sounds just like Jesus. I agree with that. He said, the minute I did that, my faith and ministry went to another level. That's what he told me. That's what he told me. And I didn't say it because he was still talking, but I remember I was about 33 at the time, and I leaned back in the chair as I was watching him and listening to him as he spoke, and I said it within myself. I said, Dale Everett, you're going to believe the gospel. That's what you're going to do. And when anyone ever says, Jesus is doing this in my life, I'm not going to doubt it. I'm going to say, that's what the word says. And that's where I'm going on it. Praise God. And I agree with you. I know you felt it. I, I got it. But I, I say amen with you. I'm here to harmonize. Yes, sir, buddy. What's the Lord doing? It's, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. It was, um, I know the spirit of God, his yes. healing presence yes. is working outside of this building of course. right now. So my friend, it was when you were speaking about the nerve damage and praying over right. that. My friend's younger sister, she's five years old, mm -hmm. and she had nerve damage on the right side of her body. Okay. And um, it was she was struggling. She couldn't walk. She couldn't write. She couldn't do mm -hmm. so many things. And I was just praying over the second you were speaking about the Good. nerves. And I texted her, and I said, um, hey, real quick, how's your sister doing? She's doing a lot better, isn't she? And she replied back, yes, she is a lot better. In fact, thanks for asking. And I said, we're just praying over her. Good. And she said, yes, all things are amazing with her. Thanks a lot for asking. Come so, on. Spirit, God, just work out. I'm going to say amen with that because you sent your word and healed them. And that's what you're yet doing today in Jesus' name. Beautiful. Praise amen. God. I say amen to that. Wow. Wow. What a healing Jesus we serve, don't we? Amen. Can anybody say thank you, Lord, with me for tonight? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, your kindness, your grace. Thank you for your answers to prayer. And, and Lord... Can I say, maybe even above that, thank you for the moment of impartation. We open our eyes and our hearts to that which is in the realm of the Spirit, that we be a people that are different. Not just free from pain, not just hearing nice, but we're different on the inside because there's a whole new level of expectation and boldness in us as we've watched the walk of the Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, let's continue this tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. 10 a.m. Great. Sharp. All right. Good. Thanks for being with us tonight. We love you with all of our heart. Yes, sir. Hasn't it been good to be in God's house tonight? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sleep well tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow. And Pleasant. Sunday night, too, and right? Sunday night, 6.30. Yeah. We're going to have a great service Sunday night as well. God bless you all. A double dose. Amen. <laughs>